Well, today is actually uh, kind of kind of weird weather right now, and uh, I'm actually with Amelia Cronin, and she is uh, pretty much elated to see the whole thing with the hula culture being completed uh, with my help. And just tell me, uh, um, you know, about the about the hula culture. We're excited about it, and what is your future of growing with this hula culture here? So I'm really excited about it too, and I'm thinking that where, you know, there's places, Cuba culture's been implemented on small scales, mostly, from what I understand, and, but it's got fantastic uses for regenerative agriculture in terms of mending soil health, providing nutrients, and also, well, basically my thinking right now is why isn't it more useful in industrial applications? So I'm going to do a little experiment with this particular Hugo culture bed. I went and visited a neighboring farm and procured some of their sugarcane, which is the number one crop produced in Iberian Parish. Um, so it's something that's a local industrial crop. And I'm thinking that I'm going to plant it. And because it has a seven year cycle, growth cycle, I won't have to replant it for another seven years, which is perfect for Hugo culture in terms of its maintenance, um, the fertilizers, the watering, the moisture availability. I think this will I'm actually thinking this is going to be kind of a perfect industrial application system potentially. Um, and my plan would then be to show, okay, well look, it's really, really simple. All you do is, you know, on these farms, all this land, when you're clearing the land, don't burn shit. Stop burning trees, start using them uh, for their carbon benefits and for their nutrients. And you're encouraging the mycology, you're encouraging all sorts of benefits, you're rehabilitating the soil. Um, and you won't have to touch it for like seven years. You won't have to do any, this is the la laziest possible method of farming, yet it's not being done. I mean, there's upfront work, obviously, but I mean, with machine tools and you know, I mean, how many, you gotta think, how many people does it take? You know, how much labor goes into per acre harvesting, you know, $3,000 worth of sugarcane, and then all the chemicals, all the money that's been dumping into the chemicals, the toxicity, getting it to grow, preventing pests from it, there's a much more natural and lazy way to do it, uh, which I think would return benefits year after year with minimal work. So, and then you don't have to burn, you don't, you know, the, whatever, I, when I was looking around the field, you know, I was seeing that like, okay, so you see the roots already growing here. This is like waste. This is a waste product that's normally burned, but this is usable plant material. So my thinking is whatever, you know, when you harvest it, don't burn it, just let it keep growing. You don't have to replant that way. It, it, it makes no sense the way that traditional industrial agriculture is happening here. And the health impacts on the population are so real that it's time for intervention. Um, and being able to demonstrate that it's profitable, I think will be the possible catalyst for like significant change in this agricultural system and the way that land is used and developed in this part of the world. So that's what my goal is. Do you think you can uh, make more of this type of hula culture in other areas as you have more of the uh, branches? Um, yeah, like I went on a tour earlier this, this other part of the property over here and there's like a natural elevation system. So I'm thinking of building a crawfish pond there where the water retains, plant rice and grow crawfish there. Build a, and on the baffle levees, instead of just using clay soil, use hula culture in addition to the, in addition to the uh, clay soil and you've got another crop to rotate into the polyculture aspects of regeneration. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you can go, it can be used if you're constructing, you know, if you're constructing land, if you're if you're working land, you're repurposing it, you're doing something, you're developing it for industrial purposes. This is the way to do it. Is to kind of have this plan in mind before you start tearing. It. There's no need to tear up everything. Everything is already the way it needs to be. People work too hard to make not enough money when you could just let nature do all the work. Exactly is what I'm thinking. But this will be a little experiment in that. So that's my plan. I'm gonna put some of it down here, see if it starts rooting. And then when I see some roots growing, I'm gonna put it in the dirt. I mean, it's, it's really easy to propagate. It's, it's a, basically, it's a marsh grass that tastes really, really good when you get the sweet, juicy inside part going. So I'm just gonna let the roots start kinda pulling themselves in, doing what they do, and see what happens. And I planted some like supporting like nasturtium and marigolds at the bottom, just in case, like, I don't know. I'm not really familiar with any, I know that they spray constantly. 
So I'm assuming that there's got to be some natural pest, some, something that, you know, something, some bugs that want to eat it. So, you know, when we find out what those are, then we'll figure out kind of how nature steps in and handles it instead of trying to... Have you considered uh, thinking about ways of comparing planting with, uh, with uh, what should we call it? Uh, with, I'm with thinking sugar. soybeans are companion plants, but I don't know. I'm open, I'm totally open. This hasn't been done with sugar cane before. This hasn't been done in this part of the, this part of the world. And so we get to build it as we go. That's the exciting part. All right, well, I'm actually looking forward to uh, seeing the whole thing. Uh, please definitely send some photos of it, you know, as time goes by. And I'm looking forward to see how it looks like, you know, as within the months to come. And uh, thank you very much, thank you know, you. for for, uh, for, it was good working with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm greatly appreciated with this whole project. I'm also enjoying myself. I enjoy myself learning this process along the way. Same. And, and I'm looking forward to see, you know, see more hogo culture along the way, you know, in the time future. Yeah, like this immediate area right here is more for like vegetable gardening purposes, just for like food production. But in terms of more industrial scale, I think there's a lot more property to work with. Right. Alright, uh, maybe thank you so much. Uh, uh, greatly appreciate and and thank you for it's been great working with you. Same.